Hi guys, in this video, uh, we're gonna be taking a look at a step-by-step -step of printing this basilisk from Warplot Miniatures. Scruffy Crow. Okay, so I've had my printer just over a month now. Uh, and I'm kind of starting to get to grips with it to the point where I felt I could make this video. Uh, I am still very much a newbie. So the purpose of this video is to sort of demystify the process, uh, show you how I do it, uh, what's been working for me so far. And it's more aimed at people who don't yet own a printer. Uh, I'm certainly not gonna be showing anything revolutionary or potentially even, I'm not gonna be showing the correct way of doing these things, just uh, the way I've been getting my results. Okay, so first things first, you need to find some files. Uh, this is the download of this month's, uh, this is the download of this month's Patreon Awards from Warplock. Uh, link will be in the description for that. Um, and we need, and I wanna print one of these basilisks. Um, so this is the uh, pre-supported ones. They're offered each month, uh, supported and unsupported, but I think the supported one saves a lot of time. Um, so I'm just gonna drag and drop that into the slicer we're using shooty box and then we can see a sort of 3d model of what we are trying to print this box obviously represents the plate on my printer so it's not going to fit at the moment so i'm just going to rotate that round there we go And we're gonna get that nice and central. Now normally probably I'd fill up these spare spaces with some extra junk, um, just to make the, the fact this is gonna be a long print, uh, just to sort of get the most out of it. Uh, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much today. I'm just gonna print this. As far as my settings, uh, this is my default settings, which is pretty much the default that comes with the uh, thing which is a 0 0.05 layer height um, and just everything else default uh, for this I want it to be as fine as possible or well, maybe not as possible uh, so I'm going to go for a 0 0.02 so this is going to probably take well this is going to take more than twice as long as the 0 0.05 um, but the difference will be instead of there being vaguely visible layer lines you should barely be able to see them at all um, I've got quite a low exposure time at the moment. I am going to tweak that up a little bit uh, because of some problems I've been having uh, with the supports not printing. So yeah, I'm pretty much going to stick with that. Okay, I actually have decided to just to use up a little bit of the space. Um, I've got this little random robot model here uh, off Thingiverse. Currently, uh, the Z height, so the hut to to height of this sort of stick is 24 uh, mil, uh, so then that plugs in there. So this is probably almost human height. I don't want it quite that tall. I want it to be a little bit dinkier than that. So I'm going to change that to 20, uh, which gives me 81.2. So I'm just going to round that for ease to 80, and we'll get this one. I'm going to take that down to match. Obviously these are gonna require supports. So for that, I'm just gonna to go to the supports tab. And on the most part, I am just gonna click all. Now the bit that comes to mind on this is, is this sort of overhang here. And I'd rather that was more supported than that. When you think about the way things print and you're doing layer at a time, um, I think it makes sense where you can sort of put the supports. It seems fairly intuitive. And in here it's dead simple, just to click where you want it. So I'm going to go back to the first tab. So my settings are still set at the fine print and I'm going to click slice. So this is a huge model, so this will take some time. Okay, so that's finished slicing now. So uh, we've got some information down this side, how much resin it's going to use um, and the time it's going to take. So this is, it says it's going to take, 
about 10 hours. I suspect once we get it on the printer, that's going to go up a little bit. It never guesses exactly. Um, and we can use this little slider to, to see how it's going to make the model. And then right down the bottom, there's my little robot. Cool. So I'm going to save that now and pop it on a memory stick and we'll take it over to the printer. Okay, so now we're over at the printer. I did just remember I had a bit of a problem with my last print. And one of the models failed. Uh, so what I've had to do is I've had to pop the tray out at the bottom here, which is held on with these two knobs. Uh, drain the resin into this little jar that I use uh, and peel the failed print off the FEP, which is this plastic film at the bottom of there. Uh, I've also used this sort of disposable filter uh, to filter out any chunks or bumps that I might have got into the resin. I know that the bed is level, that wasn't the cause of the failure. Uh, the failure was because I didn't put enough supports in or angled the model right or something. Definitely my fault though. Um, so now I'm going to pour this resin back into here. If I hadn't been doing this, if I knew that my FET was already clean, I'd probably just give it a quick stir with my plastic scraper, make sure the resin was mixed together, and then just go for it. But this is one extra step um, that I don't often have to do. So I've popped that back in there. Um, as you can see, the max line is here. Um, I'm actually going to top it up with a little bit more fresh resin straight out of the bottle, which I'm going to shake first. I probably don't need to. Uh, there's probably enough in there to make this model, but it is a big model and it's going to be on for a long time and I'm not going to be paying attention to it, uh, so I'd rather be safe than sorry. So there, just top that up all the way to the max. I'm just going to pop the lid back on. You notice that my lid has four bits of electrician's tape holding this rubber gasket on. Uh, the forums suggest that even people glue this on somehow or just bin it. Um, I've decided for somewhere in between at the moment. So I'm going to pop this on and things are going to get a bit... Uh, and there'll be a bit more white noise on the camera. Okay, so I've got the memory stick in with the file loaded on it and all I have to do is select print and this will give me a visual list of all the files available to print that are on that stick. If we come right in, you'll see that the uh, basilisk file. There's even a little picture of how that's going to look. Um, it's not as clear on this one as it is sometimes, but that's fine. So we're just going to select that. There he is in a bit more detail. There's our basilisk. And just check all my preparations. My bed's in, it's level, my resin's mixed and ready to go. So I'm just going to press play. Okay, so the bed's just touching down into the resin now. And we'll see on the bottom screen here uh, what my first layer is gonna look like. So that's all the supports. And then we can see our little robot up on the corner. The timer down there is currently reading 10 hours, um, but it might go up, uh, rarely comes down. Uh, but now I'm happy that it's off and it's uh, doing its thing. I am just going to leave that alone for 10 hours. And here we go. After 22 minutes, it's decided it is going to be a 12 hour print after all, uh, just over. But that probably will come down a little bit. Okay, so it is the next morning now. Um, this ran until about half 11, and at which point my phone was dead and I was tired, so I didn't record then. So it's just been hanging there upside down. Uh, you want to leave it a few minutes, um, 10, 15 minutes anyway, normally, to just let all the resin drain off. And what I'd usually do is I'd normally clip it onto this sort of tilting platform and that helps the resin drain away. Let's have a look at what we've got. It looks very glossy and very smooth. I'm not going to hold them up in the light too long. Uh, but all these parts appear to have printed correctly. Uh, and we've got a little robot there. So now we move over to the next station. It's my little wash and cure machine. You've got uh, a couple of options. Uh, we've got this sort of chip basket if you want to scrape it off first, or this sort of arm, so that connects into there. Tap the 
something on the printer. Now my alcohol looks really cloudy, uh, but I, as far as I know that's relatively clean, uh, but I think I just I put some cold IPA into the warmer sort of bucket to top it up a little bit because it's quite a deep print and it uh, has sent it all cloudy. I'm assuming that's some sort of reaction like with Perno, uh, but I don't know for sure. Um, it's fine, we're just going to drop the thing down to the liquid. Uh, I'm going to adjust this. Just so the plate is sat underneath the level of the alcohol. Pop the top on. And we want this to be a wash, which is signified by two little drips. I'm going to give it, I don't know, six minutes. And then just press play. This is a pretty simple machine to use. As you can see, it's literally only got four buttons. So that is now washing away my print, uh, and about halfway through, it'll change direction. As I said, that is a relatively clean set of alcohol in there. Uh, my last batch of dirty alcohol is in this other Tupperware tub, and I leave this on the windowsill in the sun. And what'll happen is slowly all this gray will uh, cure and drop out and form a layer on the bottom um, and then we can uh, skim off the clean stuff off the top. Also guys remember to wear gloves when you go anywhere near the resin or the alcohol uh, because it can cause skin complaints and similar. Do as I say not as I do. Also while waiting for that let's have a talk about my workspace. This is our, currently on a a uh, big old chunk of industrial racking that I've uh, got set up in my room. I've put a layer of fake carbon fibre sticky back plastic down that I had left over. Uh, that's just to make that bit a bit more wiped clean in case anything does spill. And then in front of that I've got two of these um, silicon... Oh, is it changing direction? Uh, silicon dog feeding mats uh, for all the uh, the messiest parts. Uh, which are quite easy to clean up. Also one of the big key things uh, for this setup is my uh, big roll of blue roll that I keep to hand. If I wanted to do some continuous printing this would be the point where I would go to my, back to my printer. I'd get my little uh, soft scraper and I would sc uh, scrape the bottom of the vat and uh, make sure that there was anything chunky. If I did feel anything, anything if you feel anything chunky of any variety, I would then have to filter all the resin out um, and then take all the remove the chunks, remove anything that was on the bottom, and put it all back in. However, if it, if it all feels absolutely fine, I normally just give it a stir, put a new file on the memory stick, uh, wait until the, I have the plate back and do it all again. Okay, this thing's just giving me the little beep beep to let me know it's done. Pop the top off. And then all those really soft details have cleaned up quite a bit. And we can see the scales, skin patterns, and the tread on the tyre and everything. I'm just going to pop that uh, on my little paper towel down here. To make sure that gets completely drained. And then with the tub, we just pop that off. We've got a sealed lid for it. Okay, so I've recently discovered in my sort of trial and error, that it's better off, I think, to remove the supports at this stage now, or at least the ones that you're really going to notice. So I'm going to start off with my sort of palette knife, it's got a sharpened edge. I'm just going to scoop that under the, the raft bit here. I'm going to work this around. There we go, I've got it snuck under, and eventually this thing's going to pop off. Or maybe not. 
There we go. Same with the robot. That's gone forever. So for supports, I've got uh, some snips. These are actually the ones that came with the printer and they're actually fairly nice to use. With the ones on the tail like here, I'm probably not gonna be that careful. I'm gonna just pop them off, like peel them off. Once again, wear some gloves for this. But if, it'll, if I can get this to focus, you can see where these have popped off. Uh, they've left little bumps outwards. Whereas I've noticed that if you pop these off and they and they come off with their own accord without you cutting them, uh, once the model's been cured, it actually leaves a little crater instead, um, which is obviously less desirable. There's a lot of supports on this model. Uh, so it's gonna take me a little bit of time to work through them. So here he is, free from all his supports. Now I'm noticing the bottom is a bit sort of greasy and shiny. I'm trying to touch this as little as possible because I don't want to leave any fingerprints or any damage. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick him in the wire basket. Uh, put the robot in there as well. And I'm gonna send them for another little swim. As far as this stuff goes, uh, I have seen mentioned on the forums that you should fully cure this before, oh, there's it changed direction. Uh, fully cure this before uh, throwing it away. Uh, I haven't been on the most part. I've just been leaving it on the windowsill maybe for a couple of hours to just to cure a bit more. It's probably about as uh, the same. But what I have noticed is this is some quite interesting, uh, puts me in mind of like industrial ruins, I think on some of these. Uh, so I'll be, I've been holding on to a few bits and pieces um, that look particularly sort of industrially ruiny uh, just for future terrain purposes. Okay, after a second rinse, pop this back out to dry. So while my beastie is, yeah, just, just letting that dry, I'm just letting the alcohol sort of evaporate off. Give it a little dab if need be. Uh, we're just going to rebuild the machine. I said we're taking the tank off. I'm going to replace it with this plate. And we're going to switch the um, time from. And we're going to switch the mode. Uh, and that go from two little drips to a little light bulb. And we're going to bring and give this, I don't know, five minutes. I'm never sure how long to cure things for, but I think you can over cure stuff and they become brittle, which is saying something because this stuff is relatively brittle. So when I'm happy this guy is dry and clear of sort of uncured resin, I'm just going to pop him on the turntable, pop the lid back on, and we press play. I don't know why this makes such a loud noise. Um, it doesn't always. Okay, so he's had his spin now. And we can see all the, the final level of detail. I think that's turned out real nice. Um, so this takes over to the normal desk. Okay, over here I have prepared a old Warhammer base. I'll just put a bit of tape over the holes, uh, which he fits on fairly nicely, which with his tail overhanging. But, and I've got my files and my scalpel uh, to clear him up. So he's still a little bit weird feeling at the moment. Um, but what I've found is if I give him, I don't know, four or five hours just to dry out fully, uh, this will stop feeling in any way strange and start feeling like uh, just any other resin model. And then any remaining bits of support or uh, anything else that we want to clear up, uh, we can clear off just like any other resin model we'd bought from any other manufacturer. And although the downside was that long uh, 12 hour print, you would now struggle to find a single layer line in this model. So here we are, here's our final result. And I'm pretty happy where this has come out. Uh, as with almost every single time I've printed something, there are a couple of things I might have done differently, uh, but that's all part of the learning process. As I just said, this model is now comparable to any other resin model that I would have bought, um, and sort of still needs a bit of cleaning up and stuff, uh, but nothing from now on is any different from how I treat a normal model. 
as I said at the beginning, uh, this video isn't meant to show any anything revolutionary. This is just the way I do it. Uh, if you did see, if you are sort of familiar with 3D printers and you did see anything that I did majorly wrong, uh, please let me know and I will try and improve it. If you've got any uh, other hints and tips that might help, uh, as I said, stick them down in the comments or come and give me a shout on the Discord. Uh, if you've got any questions, if this is all new to you and you've got any questions you want to ask me about my experiences in the last month or so, uh, once again, stick it down in the comments, come and join the Discord, say hi, uh, and I'd be happy to talk about it. Because uh, I said at the moment, this is my, it's all very new to me uh, and all very exciting. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.